We're currently experiencing quite an incredible move in the market, and it's ahistorical. We had only seen uh, the VIX red seven days in a row two times in the past three, four years. That was August 2020 and March 2021. March 2021 was shortly after the initial ARKK crash. The ARKK crash symbolized the beginning of the end for growth and for the mega rally we were experiencing in the market. The S&P, the NASDAQ, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, obviously did not peak in March, 2021, but that was shortly after Biden came into office and the day after he won the election until you know the peak, the market was continuing to rally on this notion, not that Biden was gonna be a great president and do tremendous things, but that he was gonna spend more money we were addicted to the stimulus we'd gotten in all 2021 or 2020, that that was definitely going to continue. And oh boy, it did. But, you know, in March of 2020, uh, things started to begin to return to normal, begin to return to normal and more rationality, sanity, logical investing based on cash flows and return to you, the shareholder. Lost in all this in the past several years, has been the idea that you need to get an actual return somehow. That, you know, not everything is this pyramid Ponzi scheme where, you know, the next guy is going to hold the bat. Like, that's not the idea here. The idea here is that you buy an asset and ideally you never sell the asset. You just hold the asset and collect the cash flow. That's what it's supposed to be. That's what it was in real estate before cap rates got incredibly suppressed and we're now kind of seeing the beginning of the unwind of that so we want people to own assets to generate fruits from those those assets but the whole world has gotten incredibly unequal and incredible so rising interest rates is the only way to do that now let's get back to the fundamentals so the vix has gone eight days in a row red i don't know if that's ever happened it's like this the seven days in a row thing happens like an average of once per year i believe it's happened 30 times in the last 34 years something like that or 34 times in the last 30 years very rare event and the power of numbers you're adding that eighth one on top of that it might have happened before again very rare so what is the vix the vix is the fear gauge the VIX is the fear gauge. So when it's red, that means people are not fearful. So for the last eight days in a row, we've seen uh, people not be fearful. And I don't know about you, but I'm pretty concerned. I mean, there's no way to win here. There's no way to win here. Either there's a recession sooner and inflation comes down sooner and the consumer pulls back sooner and earnings decline sooner and stocks should go down because PEs will go up and that shouldn't happen. That's the ideal outcome actually though, that this gets over with sooner. We don't need to push rates as high to get make that happen, that we can just rip the bandaid off, get in and out and just move on and get back into that paradigm where millennials and Gen Z can buy a house at a reasonable price, can buy stocks that are reasonably valued, don't need to be trading Dogecoin and hoping things go to the moon, that you can get rich slowly. These kinds of notions that used to be prevalent and are no longer prevalent in today's society. That is the ideal situation that we can get to that picture with low inflation, real wage increases, real buying power increases, that great world, that economy of 2018, 2019 and early part of 2020. That's what we want to get to. That's one side. The other possible outcome is also not super good, not super good in the short term, at least, in the short to medium term. It's gonna take a process regardless, a full side of the economic cycle. The other possibility is inflation stays high, but corporate earnings don't deteriorate massively. Consumer spending remains relatively stable and strong, and the Fed has to tighten more to bring it down. Let's not forget, Typically, when consumer spending slows, the Fed cuts to stimulate. Right now, it's a totally different situation. We stimulated. Many stocks are still at very much stimulated prices. We're talking about them all the time. You know, NAS, uh, NASDAQ stocks, Apple, Microsoft, 
NVIDIA, very much stimulated stocks, very much at stimulated valuations. Not, it's not rocket science here. This is pretty easy to see. And we're not stimulating. We're actually doing the opposite. We're tightening. So it would be great if the entire market could realize that, but they want to fight the Fed. And if you know anything about market history, if, you know, if you've been given any wisdom by any long-term market participants, they will tell you not to fight the Fed. This is a golden piece of advice. And the Fed controls the money. So it, again, it's not rocket science that you don't want to fight the people that control the money. But everyone thinks they're so smart. Everyone thinks they, they know what's best. They want to fight the Fed because their projection is right. The Fed is going to have to pivot. And yeah, they did have to pivot before. They had to pivot hawkish. But they're not going to make that mistake again. They're not going to make that mistake again. They have seen real wages decline. They've seen tremendous hardship amongst the lower and middle classes of America. And they've brought tremendous benefit to the wealthy Americans of America. So if you know the current regime, if you know like the morality of the world, that is not the way it should be. Inflation hurts mo those most least able to bear the burden. Cutting rates benefits those most able to bear any burden. So... It's like, no, they're not going to cut rates. They're going to get inflation down to 2% and they're going to get that job done. The people that benefit the most from rates coming down are the richest people, full stop. The people that are hurt the most by inflation are those least able to bear the burden. The people at the bottom are not thinking about buying a house. They're, they don't need a 3% mortgage. They're not even thinking about buying stocks, okay? They're thinking, does my credit card have enough that I can buy ground beef instead of chicken for my family. Like it's crazy that people just want to cut rates. These rich people in California on Twitter, the Fed's got to cut rates. They're going to crash the economy. People need to buy the grocery store. It's a totally backwards thing. But the market wants to fight the Fed. The market wants to fight the Fed. They want to call for rate cuts and that's what the market's pricing. But as far as I'm aware, the more the market does that, the bigger the market reckoning that's going to come. Bullard said today, the market should listen to him. If you look at the dot plot, there's one person who expects no more rate hikes. One person. Everyone else is either, either one more hike, that's the median forecast, but the bias is actually one more rate hike. And if you have been paying attention the entire time, not just being reactive to the change in your net worth that you've seen because of your big net worth, because you're very wealthy, obviously, if you're calling for rate cuts, the change in your net worth that you've seen uh, in the last couple months or you know several months, you will know that it has been the people on that hawkish end of the spectrum that have moved the entire Fed, that have been the ones that have been correct on the picture on inflation that have been the ones that were forward thinking, more accurate, less concerned about the stuff that didn't matter and more so concerned with the people who are at the grocery store, the people who are bearing most of the burden of the problem. So the market has got to adjust. The market doesn't want to adjust, but if you heard Neil Kashkari, Wall Street's optimistic, He's familiar with Wall Street, but he will win the game of chicken. And that's what this is. This is a game of chicken. The Fed wants to get inflation down. You can fight him if you want. I'm not going to fight him. It's not rocket science. At least it's my opinion on it. But I'm doing a lot of work here. I'm doing a lot of homework. And I feel very confident in this. Obviously, it's not performed. But you can't let dictate, uh, sentiment dictate or price dictate your sentiment. You know? It's got to be based on the truth and the fundamentals. I'm not going to fight the Fed. I'm going to expect the Fed to continue to hike at least one more time. I actually think they're probably going to go to 5.25 to 5.5. I think that's more, more what they're trying to signal. But, you know, obviously I'm not expecting the market to price that in yet. I'm just trying to get the two-year above 4%. I mean, it shouldn't be below 4%. That makes no sense if you look at the dot plot. It makes no sense. So... We might get some dovish data today. I mean, I saw that ISM number that is uh, not looking too good for uh, for jobs. 
that might cause a short-term market rally. I'm not going to be surprised if we get that. Nonetheless, I said what I said this entire video. I think, you know, I heard Collins last week, Fed, President Collins, who's a rather dovish person, say even if we get a weak jobs report on Friday, that that won't change her tune. And she still expects another hike. And for the rest of the year, she said all that on Friday. So we, the, the data doesn't even matter at this point if it's a little dovish. The Fed is locked in on what they're doing. The only reason why the data would matter, let's not forget, they're expecting inflation to come down to 3.25 by the end of the year. So they are granting you a big slowdown in inflation. They're granting you a big slowdown in inflation. The only reason the Fed would slow down or revert or something is a situation you don't want to see. Because like I said, normally when there's a slowdown, the Fed cuts, the Fed stimulates. If they're going to cut or do something like that, it's going to be a really, really bad situation. It's going to be a hardcore recession. So we don't want to see that either. So that's today's video. Until next time, peace out.